If your P320 fails the SEER movement test I have previously demonstrated in both complicated and simplistic form on this channel, then you have two options if you want a pistol that will reliably pass the test. Option one, sell the P320 at undoubtedly a massive monetary loss and replace it with a different pistol. Option two, Let's summarize what we know. Two failures are necessary for an uncommanded discharge to occur with a P320. Step one, the striker must be released from the sear. To date, no one has provided a solid explanation for how this occurs. My personal theory is that discovering the root cause of this step is something that would require institutional levels of testing setup and sample size. Clearly, however, the strikers being released doesn't care about the secondary sear and is not being accompanied by reports of parts breakages. This, by necessity, of the tolerances within the slide and the FCU requires that the sear moves downwards to release the striker. On every P320 I have examined, there was not sufficient clearance for the striker foot to slip over the sear without the sear moving downwards to provide that clearance. Step two required for an uncommanded discharge to occur is for the striker safety lock to fail, allowing the striker to fully fall and protrude from the breech face. This is the part I particularly care about. As long as this last ditch safety function of the pistol works, no other failure matters, the striker cannot fully fall. There are three potential failures of the striker safety lock that could cause the, the striker to fully fall, that could allow the striker to fully fall. First potential failure, the tip of the striker safety lock is broken or misshapen and either does not block the striker at all or allows the falling striker to improperly move the safety lock out of the way. Second potential failure, the striker safety spring is missing, broken, or not properly installed, preventing it from moving the striker safety lock into the proper position to block the striker. Third potential failure. When it isn't supposed to, the safety lever right here moves the striker safety lock upwards and deactivates the striker safety lock as though the trigger were being pulled. Potential failure number three is what my examinations have zeroed in on, because in my opinion, there is a design flaw with the post-upgrade P320. Let's compare a normal and an abnormal firing sequence that both result in a discharge. In normal operation, the shooter pulls the trigger back in order to activate the pistol. The trigger moving back 
moves the trigger bar forwards. The trigger bar moving forwards moves the safety lever up. The safety lever moving up moves the striker safety lock up. The striker safety lock no longer blocks the striker from fully falling. The trigger bar moving forward moves the sear down. The sear moving down releases the striker with no striker safety lock in the way. Therefore, the gun performs, in this case, a commanded discharge. The design flaw occurs on some pistols, but not all pistols, when the sear is somehow moved as the first step. This is what the sear movement test, firmly pressing on the sear with a punch or screwdriver, is testing for. The sear moves down through the rear leg of the sear through this leg, the sear moving down pushes the trigger bar forwards, making the trigger bar move as though it were being pulled by the trigger. The trigger bar moving forwards moves the safety lever up. The safety lever moving up moves the striker safety lock up. The striker safety lock no longer blocks the striker from fully falling. The sear moving down releases the striker with no striker safety lock in the way. Therefore, the gun performs an uncommanded discharge. Thus far, I have found two factors that mitigate this design flaw that can allow sear movement to improperly disable the striker safety lock. Consistently, if in response to sear movement, the trigger bar moves downwards to any degree instead of solely forwards, this delays the timing of the safety lever moving up and the striker safety lock being deactivated until after the striker has attempted to fall, meaning the striker safety lock blocks the striker from fully falling. This seems to render the pistol safe from this specific design flaw. Unfortunately, I have not been able to establish a reliable commercial off-the-shelf method to make any FCU demonstrate this trigger bar behavior, so I can't offer any solutions based on this finding. Inconsistently, a particularly strong striker return spring will somehow prevent an FCU a failing FCU from causing the striker to protrude. I have observed the correlation of a strong striker return spring to lower rates of failure, but I have not been able to establish the cause of this mitigation, nor any parameters for what will or won't mitigate this design flaw to certain degrees including absolute certainty. Since I can't establish why this mitigation is occurring, I can't offer any solutions based on this finding either. My attempts to reliably reproduce these two observed mitigating factors proved fruitless. So I started attacking the problem upstream instead. At the heart of this design flaw is the manner in which sear movement can cause sympathetic movement of the trigger bar, which then causes everything else.
to go wrong. This goes hand in hand with the reason that the P365 is not vulnerable to the same design flaw. When the P365's sear moves as the first step, nothing happens to the rest of the pistol. The root cause for the difference in response to the sear movement test is the difference in sear design between the post-upgrade P320 sear and the P365 sear. The post-upgrade P320 sear has this rear leg that contacts the trigger bar almost immediately upon movement. The P365 sear does not have that rear leg. The rear leg on the post-upgrade P320 sear is the flaw. The next question is, does this rear leg serve any functional purpose? Well, the sloped surface on the top half of this rear leg interacts with the takedown safety lever. This is why when you are disassembling the P320, you don't have to pull the trigger to field strip. The takedown safety lever pulls, the, sorry, the takedown safety lever pushes back against the sear, against this top sloped surface on the rear leg, and cams the sear downwards, bringing it out of the path of the striker. Commenter Eric Heineke257 suggests that this rear leg is meant to connect the trigger bar and sear, allowing the trigger bar spring to provide additional resistance against uncommanded sear movement. I haven't been able to find any sources to confirm or dispute this claim. Other than this, neither I nor my friend nor anyone we have spoken with has suggested any potential purpose for the bottom half of this leg. So we chopped it off. My friend with the failing FCU bought a replacement post-upgrade sear to experiment with and chopped off the rear leg below the point where it interacts with the takedown safety lever. Looks exactly like this. With the new modified sear in place, lacking the bottom half of the rear leg, his pistol now passes the sear movement test because the specific design flaw we had identified has been rectified. His P320 now behaves just like a P365. Sear movement does not cause any sympathetic movement of the trigger bar, meaning that even if his sear were to move enough to release the striker, the striker safety lock would still be properly in place, blocking the striker from fully falling. This pistol also still passes the full battery of function tests. 
trigger behavior and shooting behavior has not been changed at all. The takedown safety lever still functions properly. Subjectively, the sear does not seem to be any easier to move on its own than it was before. And he now has shot a competition's worth of ammunition through his P320 with no discernible difference to its prior behavior, except that sear movement no longer causes a failure of the pistol's final safety mechanism. It should go without saying that chopping off the sear's rear leg below the takedown safety lever interface is obviously not a factory or commercial off-the-shelf solution with the backing of Sig Sauer. Sig does not sell a version of the post-upgrade sear without the rear leg. The pre-upgrade sear doesn't have the rear leg, but obviously that comes with its own problems. Oddly, some of SIG's early voluntary upgrade program literature shows an initial design for a post-upgrade SEER that did not feature the rear leg. However, I have never seen an example of that design in the wild, and I'm uncertain whether it was ever produced at all. If you are not willing to open up your FCU and at your own risk, take a saw, dremel, and or file to a critical FCU component, do not do this modification. If you do decide to pursue this modification, I'd highly recommend you buy a replacement sear and keep the original sear intact and safely stored somewhere so that you can return your FCU to factory configuration at will. Also, I would recommend that you reference SIG Mechanics a tech P320 FCU a textbook teardown video for clear, concise instructions on how to take apart and put back together your FCU. Finally, I cannot guarantee that this modification won't cause a different kind of problem somewhere else. The P320 FCU is enough of a mousetrap that it is possible the bottom half of the rear leg of the sear plays some kind of meaningful function that has now been disabled. Though, if it does, I have not been able to discern what that function might be. Ultimately, I offer this video to point out the specific design flaw, which I personally believe is related to the uncommanded discharge phenomena. And to share a potential at your own risk modification that seems to resolve this specific design flaw.